Wow, we have so many powerful, beautiful hymns, don't we? You know one thing the Holy Spirit of God does in my life that is extremely helpful, and you do this too, maybe you won't put it exactly the same way I do, but a Sunday morning worship service in America the Beautiful, even when she's not so beautiful, even when our world seems upside down, that um, God impresses on my heart that right here in this moment, I can worship him. That's a big deal. We don't understand it as much now, but um, it's a big deal. It's pleasing to our God. God hears it. God's pleased to see the the fellowship of the saints gathered together, whether there's a thousand or twenty or however many, no matter what's going on in this world, no matter what's going on in our lives. We have st stuff that it just kind of knocks us for a loop, doesn't it? And we just come back to, I have the opportunity to please God with my time on this earth. That's amazing. It's, well, it, you know what it is. It's amazing, it's for sure it's amazing. But it's God's mercy, it's his love, and it's his grace. And in his amazing word, he tells us all these things. I listened to a message, this wasn't planned, but I just, I'm rolling now, so overlook me. But uh, Alistair Beck message this week, and. Lord willing, we will watch this, his, this video next Sunday evening. And um, it was, uh, I'll look for, if I have a text, a scripture coming up, I'm going to be preaching from, I'll look for Alistair Begg or MacArthur or whoever. Anyway, I ran across this Alistair Begg. Just powerful, powerful. And, and much of the emphasis as was, what does it mean that we are in Christ? Now, it's a concept we're familiar with. It's a concept I'm very familiar with. But just the beauty and the power and the clarity of God's word telling us all of these things that are involved when we believed in Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of sins and received the gift of eternal life. And God just, keep, it just keeps opening up and opening up this amazing gift of salvation that he's brought to us. One day, we're going to see him face to face. We're going to be so happy we took the time out to worship him while still on the dark planet. Well, we do have a few announcements. Uh, one announcement I'll make that we are going to recognize our veterans when Lee comes uh, up here before the first song. And just a note on that, I know I was visiting with someone this week and they said, well, in their church, uh, they don't do that uh, because they're not, well, we do that. We've had the tradition of doing that. And I know the, the, the uh, holiday is, is focused on those who have died in service. But to me also, even ha having those stand who have served, it reminds us of that also. And, and it helps us to, it does help us to, to honor that time. So anyway, that Lee will, Lee will do that for us. And did you see... Janice Cam has a new address. Now, don't run down there yet and knock on her door because uh, she might shut it back and lock it because uh, they probably have boxes all over the place. In fact, when I called her, uh, they were in the car. So I said, I'll call back and we'll figure out when you're settled enough and, and we'll uh, drive over for a visit. But there's her new address, uh, 206 Janet Trail, Palmyra, uh, Missouri. And so you want to mark that down. Uh, June 6th, men's study, which, see, June is, what, Wednesday. June starts Wednesday. June 11, men's breakfast at High V, And we wanted to get that in the bulletin, and we thought, well, it'll be like before the pandemic. Of course, all that stuff stopped during the pandemic. And the church will pick up the tab, come to the men's breakfast, uh, invite a friend, invite a neighbor. It's going to be very low-key. We're not going to have any type of, type, type of service or agenda, just as we've done before, and we've really enjoyed that, just getting for, together for breakfast. For Father's Day, right, Dave? 
Yeah, June 11th. Uh huh. Yeah, this will be in regard to Father's Day. Uh, June 13, board meeting at 9 a.m. June 18, you can read all that, but we'd like to, God's love, mercy, and grace. Carrie and I will celebrate 50 years on June 17th, and on June 18th, Saturday, um, we would like to invite you between 1 and 4, just come, say hi, eat some food, um, what you know, whatever it might be, just to share that. It's, it's supposed to, to remain, we're going to try to keep it as simple as possible. Just come, say hi, share that time with us, and you don't have to stay any period of time or anything like that. Uh, tonight, no evening service, and on Father's Day, no evening service, no Sunday evening service. Any other announcements I need to bring our attention to this morning? Okay, uh, we have prayer requests. I know Randy would probably like for us to share that. Would would you you want to yes. share that or? Uh, many of you know I have. Uh small cell lymphoma. I went down for a biopsy and they found more cancer. So uh, my doctor who I've seen in Quincy had it was in a bad accident so I can no longer see him for a while. So I've got to take a no longer trip to St. Louis to either Barnes or Washington <coughs> University and see his oncologist specialist. Don't know when it's going to be. I'll keep you posted. So just Thank you for all your prayers. I know you guys are you're all good family and you pray for me daily. I know that. I thank you for it, but just continue to pray for me. Kelly's going to retire from her job a week from tomorrow, and after 28 years, it's time. Yeah. So yeah. Hopefully, her and I will mend some fences. Yep. Yeah. Might cut a little grass, but yeah, what? Yeah. 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 I, yeah, I do too. We had a little accident yesterday with the mowers. Uh, Kelly was mowing and she, she, she didn't do it her mower did, but she threw a little pebble through our friend's window. That so, stuff happens, doesn't it? So I got a window to pay for it. Yep, yeah. Um, I had a friend at Moody and he was telling me before Moody and he was mowing these grasses in a Chicago suburb and, and he hit a rock one day and a guy driving by just shattered his window. And the guy was a little upset, but he, he did eventually calm down. I didn't throw a rock at you. It was the mower, so. In 15 it, or 20 years of mowing, I think that's the second time that's happened. Yeah, yeah. So take everything to the Lord in prayer. Any other prayer requests we want to bring our attention to? Yes, Debbie. My grandson, Daniel. Daniel. Okay, Debbie's grandson, Daniel. Yes. Um, please pray. It is very dark in that house, and I'm very concerned about all of them. Keep Josh and Elizabeth and family in our prayers. I was thinking of them this morning. <clears throat> well, pray with me if you would. Yes. Uh, continue to ask uh, prayer for Jason, which is a family member of the Jefferson family, with some uh, health issues we mentioned. Right. Now, what's the name? Jason? Jason. Yeah, yeah, Jason, member of the, uh, the uh, Jefferson family. Help. Okay. 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 Let's go to our Father in heaven in prayer. Mighty God, how we thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for your mercy that you would uh, give us eyes to see, ears to hear, hearts to receive uh, the truth of God that we know that we need to come to you for salvation that we know that we can now worship you in spirit and in truth. We can worship you openly and, and free, freely in this country where through your sovereignty and your providential rule, you have made that possible through all the events, and lives, lives lost and, and wars fought that we have these freedoms still yet today. Uh, we thank you for the Fellowship of the Saints here, at Faith Fellowship Church of Tennessee Illinois, what you've given us, and uh, an, an ability, the unity and harmony to stand together, to stand in the word of the truth, the gospel, and the testimony of Jesus Christ, keeping and guarding the words of truth of your scripture, your holy scripture. We do bring Randy before you and Kelly, and we thank you that she's going to be able to retire. We pray that you'd work all things out with that. Uh, just Randy, as he's plans, it's a difficult 
uh, distance uh, to St. Louis, but we pray that you would bring healing to him through this. We pray we lift da Daniel before you, Debbie's grandson. We lift Josh and Elizabeth and family. And Lord, sometimes we see, well, we see the darkness everywhere. And when, when it's people that we're uh, very close to, people that we dearly love, it's, uh, it's uh, just aches aches our hearts to uh, to see the darkness and and uh, and yet you you do save you call us out of darkness into marvelous light and we would pray that for Josh and Elizabeth and the kids we bring Jason before you and uh, this continued illness and we ask for healing ask now Holy Spirit of God just to continue to bless us in the fellowship of the Saints and the worship of the Lord God the Almighty in Jesus name we pray Amen. We're in Christ. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will stand. Everybody who's a veteran, we will stand, and then we will clap. So is anybody served here? Okay, let's clap. <laughs> now we will sing America the Beautiful, 799. Would you rise? Christian Soldiers, 731. We'll sing all four verses. Cross of Jesus, 
going on before at the sign of triumph Satan's host doth flee on then Christian soldiers on to victory hell's foundation quiver at the shout of have a third hymn before the before the one this time so let's sing 723 
Amen. Lord God, the Almighty, we would ask those very things, that we would bow down before you, love and adore you, recognize you as Lord and King and God over all. Holy Spirit, how we love your words of truth. We're so thankful that you've given us the very words of God. Pray that you would teach us those words this morning, that you would change our lives with those words, that you would bring strength and courage and insight and rebuke and reproof and correction and training in righteousness and every other good thing, that we might be thoroughly equipped to serve you, the Lord God, the Almighty. Thank you for this time, how we love you, how we praise you, in Jesus' name. Amen. What is Memorial Day? Ask a question we all know the answer to. What is Memorial Day? Memorial Day is the holiday that takes place annually on the last Monday in May where we honor U.S. military personnel who have died while serving in the United States Armed Forces. Describing it in a different way, we might say that on Memorial Day, we honor the citizens of our country who have fought and died under the authority of our government for the values and beliefs of our country. This weekend, we honor over 1.1 million Americans who have paid the ultimate sacrifice for the freedoms we have, such as the freedom to worship the God of heaven as we are this morning. And one day, the God we worship, the Lord and King of heaven, will come for us, his citizens who now live on earth as strangers and foreigners. And when he calls his citizens, who are also his soldiers, to himself, he will change our weak, mortal bodies of earth into glorious bodies like his own and take us to our homeland. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Paul calls this our blessed hope in Titus 2.13. And that says, while we wait for the blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. But while we wait, and this is very important, while we wait, still living on this earth as citizens of heaven and soldiers of Christ, we are to submit to the authority of the king and live according to the values of our country, our heavenly country, which we will see later, which includes the king's command for us to, to offer the ultimate sacrifice as soldiers in these wars on earth, these wars from our Ecclesiastes study, under the sun offer the ultimate sacrifice and they lay down their lives. We as believers are commanded to offer the ultimate sacrifice, to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters in Christ. The Apostle John writes in John 15, 12, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. Now, philos is the term used, Jesus uses here for friends. This, these aren't casual friendships. It's not just social acquaintances. He's speaking, and you can see, read in the rest of John 15 and, and find more of this out but he's speaking of the intimate, eternal relationship we share with him and all those who are in Christ. The Apostle John, same writer, writes later in 1 John, and he fills in more of the blanks. There, he tells us that love for our brothers and sisters in Christ, laying down our lives for them, that that affirms two things. One, that we are no longer dead, but alive. And two, that we know the love of God. So basically it affirms that we, we are saved and it affirms that when it comes to the love of God and what that is and how to express it, that we get it. 
1 John 3, verse 14, 1 John 3, 14, we know that we have passed out of death into life because we love the brothers. Whoever does not love abides in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. By this we know love, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for the brothers. It is what the citizens of heaven do as we eagerly wait for our Lord Jesus Christ to return. We know love, and we lay down our lives for our fellow citizens. Citizens of heaven are soldiers of Christ. First this morning, we who are citizens in, of heaven eagerly wait for our Lord to return. Philippians 3.20. Philippians 3.20, but we are citizens of heaven where the Lord Jesus Christ lives. And we are eagerly waiting for him to return as our savior. He will take our weak mortal bodies and change them into glorious bodies like his own, using the same power with which he will bring everything under his control. See, we live here on earth as foreigners. It's important also that we understand that. But our official eternal residency is in heaven. Let that blessed thought sink in for a moment. As a child of God, your residency is in heaven, where Jesus lives. This reality prompts us to live in eager anticipation of our Lord returning and transforming our bodies in preparation for our eternal home. There's a good discussion of this in 1 Corinthians 15. It talks about in Adam, we were, we were given bodies like that were made for this earth. And these bodies now that we are, are a fallen race, but then it speaks of Christ, the second Adam, and we will be given bodies that are made for heaven. And that's what this text is talking about, that when Christ returns, he will change us. He will give us our bodies for heaven, our glorious bodies, because that's what it has to be to take us to glory, to be with him. Second this morning... <clears throat> We who eagerly wait for our Lord to return willingly suffer as good soldiers of Christ Jesus. <clears throat> Timothy 2, verses 3 and 4. 2 Timothy 2, verse 3. Share in suffering as a good soldier in Je in Christ, of Christ Jesus. No soldier gets entangled in civilian pursuits since his aim is is to please the one who enlisted him. Share in suffering is all one word. It means uh, share together. So we could read that, share together as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Share, su share together, it doesn't mean, let me come back to that. I'll start reading my notes this time. What it means is literally to suffer together. <clears throat> so it's saying suffer together. Together, well, who together? Brothers and sisters in Christ, citizens of the kingdom of heaven, soldiers of Jesus Christ. See, this is another th great thing about the word of God. It just flows from it all these ways that God identifies us once we come to faith in Christ and become his. And so these soldiers, we suffer together uh, good soldiers anticipate and accept suffering together as faithfulness to Christ. We say, this, this is how I will be faithful to Christ. Um, suffering together is set in contrast to becoming entangled in civilian pursuits, everyday life. And the words there, uh, civilian pursuit, that is, those two words are one word. And it basically comes to me just everyday life. And we're offered a contrast. You can, you can be devoted to everyday life or we can be devoted to Christ. And uh, <clears throat> a pers the person who 
chooses to suffer together as a good soldier, does this only by setting his or her mind on things above. So, Colossians 3, 2, set your minds on things that are above, not on the things that are on earth. Now, let me follow that up because we're going to say, well, but we've been studying Ecclesiastes and God's done all these things and he says, enjoy this life on earth. And that's right, so let me address that. The blessings we enjoy of everyday life under the sun, that is the gift of God. Ecclesiastes 5.19 Everyone also to whom God has given wealth and possessions and power to enjoy them and to accept his lot and rejoice in his toil, this is the gift of God. So we have been given, so it is not wrong, in other words, um, we had someone here say earlier, a couple of us, in, and agreed with them, enjoying cutting grass. I like cutting grass. And uh, it's like, oh, okay, the weather holds, I can, I can cut. Now, not always if you're pinched for time, but you know what I'm saying. And, uh, and I, I enjoy helping carry in the garden now. And uh, en enjoy watching God make things grow. Um, in, enjoy just all these things enjoy your home all all these things are the gift of God so it's not wrong to enjoy them until those things take priority over the things of God so it's wrong as in sinful not just kind of off but it's wrong as in sinful to prefer the blessings of everyday life over suffering together for the gospel and faithfulness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Because what happens is that if to, to follow in faithfulness to Christ, um, you know, people have lost their employment. They've had a really good job. And because of their walk with Jesus Christ, um, this, um, oh, I should have had his name ahead, but he was, um, um, he's one of the American gospel guys, and he lost his position as uh, chief financial officer with one of the the leading uh, training fitness uh, companies in the United States uh, because of his stand on uh, homosexuality and lesbianism. This very lucrative position, very important position, and, and he lost that. So we, so we might say, well, you know, I, I really like this, so I can maybe compromise some of these beliefs. There will be friendships that you will lose. In church, out of church, there will be friendships that we will, relationships that will, that will just be fall apart, and and it, it's a, and a lot of times people make the decision to hang on to that friendship, but no, we we enjoy those, but then when we need to make a decision, it's faithfulness to Christ, so it's wrong, and it, what it comes down to is, we fall in love with the blessings of God more than we fall in love with the God himself who is the blesser. So it seems we are all susceptible and understandably so to seeking refuge and escape in the everyday blessings of life at the expense of faithfulness to our Lord. You know, like a really good cup of coffee. Or, um, and that's why it's important that we remind each other. See, this is why we remind each other to obey the word of God and set our minds on things above. We're called, next, we're called to suffer together for the gospel. And I'll read this verse. And when you hear share in suffering, it's the same word. And uh, I was going to try to pronounce it, but it, it's like, have you, our, one of our granddaughters lives in Okinawa, or something like that in Wisconsin. It's like one of those. It's like one of those. So, yeah, I'm not going to try to pronounce it. But we're called to suffer together for the gospel. Therefore, do not be ashamed of the testimony about our Lord, nor of me, his prisoner, but suffer together. This is that word. Suffer together for the gospel by the power of God. We do that, and God empowers us. 1 Timothy 6, 12, we're familiar with. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called, and about which you made the good confession in the presence of many <clears throat> witnesses. Three, we who eagerly wait for our Lord to return live as fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. And one of the thoughts came to me as I put together this, this topical message is it's just, just that we have firmly in our minds 
we, we, we walk out, <clears throat> you walk out later today, and uh, especially like in the evening or, or early morning, and you look at the sky, and you, that's where Jesus lives, and that's my home. We have not just some dreamy thought, not just the, you know, something would come up with a daydream, but no, our official residency in Christ. When you come to Christ, our official residency is in heaven with our Lord. So when this world falls apart, it's like, this isn't my home. This isn't my home and everything. Personally, when things start falling apart, this is not my home. One day, as a citizen of heaven, I will hear the trumpet call of my Lord. He will call me to himself. He will take this weak mortal body, change it as I'm coming to him into a glorious body. And what did our text say? like he has and take me home my official residence it's like an official statement like we are justified by faith in jesus christ that official legal statement well our legal residency our official eternal residency is heaven i am a citizen of heaven you our citizens of heaven. It isn't that pretty great. Isn't that wonderful? So that's why you see these scriptures. I wanted to see this. So we eagerly, who eagerly wait for our Lord return, live as fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Ephesians 2.19. So then you are no longer strangers and aliens. We're still that here, but not to God but you are fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. Where is our eternal bond? It's with our brothers and sisters in Christ, our fellow citizens, those whose residency is in heaven, built on the foundation of the, prop of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone. What a wonderful thing, fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God. For we who eagerly wait for our Lord to return, well, we live in obedience to him, don't we? As we look forward to the city that God has built. Hebrews 11, verse 8. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise, for he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. And what city is that? The holy city, Jerusalem. Now see, it's interesting here because Abraham could, could, God, he could call him to a place that he didn't know where he was going because he knew where he was going. See, that you, you, you get that, don't you? And so when God changes the direction of our life, when, when he directs us to do something, we say, Lord, I don't know what you're doing. I, I, I don't know where you're taking with me with that. But we can trust God because we know where we're going. And that's where we, we will get there because he will, grace, see to it. So he went. Not knowing where he was going, but he did know where he was going ultimately. Five, it becomes increasingly clear that we who eagerly wait for our Lord to return have, have turned our hearts toward our heavenly country. It, it will become increase, increasingly clear if you're around someone who knows that their official residency is in heaven and they're eagerly waiting for the Lord to return. It'll just become more and more evident. That person is waiting for Jesus to come back. Hebrews eleven thirteen. These all died in faith, not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar. Kind of like what we're doing right now in, in seeing the Lord coming. And it's still, it's a ways away, but one day it'll be right there. 
and having acknowledged that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. You know what that's saying? The people who realize the old country gospel song, the words are very accurate and very biblical, this world is not my home. They recognize, they acknowledge that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. For people who speak thus, who realize I'm, I'm stranger, I'm passing through, for people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. See, they make it clear I'm, I'm passing through. You know, Carrie and I, we really like our place over here at 101 East Bushnell Street. And uh, we, get, we, we really like living in Tennessee, Illinois. It's where God's placed us. But, but one of the reasons we can, that you can uh, accept our lot in life, we can enjoy, we can love what we're doing, is because with everything's in God's hand because that's where God directed us. And he's, but, but we know that one day, one day, whatever, whatever we have here, whatever we gain, whatever we lose under the sun, one day we're going to our homeland. And in that room of the first verse we read, that's where, G, where Jesus lives. Because Jesus told us, didn't he, in John 14, that uh, where I go, I prepare a place for you. And he, he's, <laughs> it, that's pretty exciting, really, when you think about it. That's not part of the message today, but it, I guess it just kind of creeped in there that he's going to come, he's going to get our bodies, and he's already got our place. Now, if someone, you know, you've maybe helped someone find a place and you picked out just the right place for them, and, you, and, the, and you're, you're the recipient of that, and it's like you're all excited, well, how about Jesus preparing the place for you and me? For you and yeah, that's that's pretty wonderful. So, if they had been thinking of the land of that la of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. But as it is, they desire a better country, that is a heavenly one. Therefore, God is not be ashamed. God is not ashamed to be called their God, for He has prepared for them a city. That's what God has done for us. All in the package of the salvation that was brought to us through Jesus Christ. That's why we got to get the gospel right, because it's all there or none of it's there. Six, we who eagerly wait for our Lord to return know that here on earth we have no lasting city, so we seek the city that is to come. Hebrews 13, 13, therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured, for here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Don't put your roots down too deep because we just keep looking for the city that's to come. That is where we, our eternal dwelling will be. Here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him then let us continually offer up a sacrifice of praise to God. That is the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. So what do we do? Well, it's kind of like what I was saying when I began this morning, that um, no matter what's going on, I'm, we're seeking that city that is to come, and then what do we do in the meantime? We just we praise God that we can worship Him all along the way. We praise God that we can serve Him all along the way, and we can obey Him specifically in caring for our brothers and sisters in Christ, having God establish our priorities, and we just and then more and more it builds this eager anticipation, this joyful anticipation which is one definition of hope and uh, and this then one day we will see our Lord we who eagerly wait seven we who eagerly wait for our Lord to return will one day see the holy city New Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God that's an event that is on your calendar and mine Sometimes we just have to stop and <clears throat> we have to let these things soak in, don't we? Because it's so easy to read that, oh, yeah, and, and, and we could get into all the description of uh, the New Jerusalem and the Holy City and all the different meanings that might happen and all that. But sometimes we just have to say, stop, wait a minute. The point is, I'm going to see it coming. The city that we're waiting for, it will happen. And it'll be beyond our description anyway. Revelation 21, 1, then I saw a new heaven. We'll see that too, see? Then I saw a new heaven and a, and a new earth. 
I don't know what to say. All these, well, we'll see, we'll be right there. Front row seats. We, what were those Bob Euchre seats, you know, way up there <clears throat> that you can't see anything going on. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. We, no wonder we have hope. You know, we looked at last Sunday night, <clears throat> in the first five verses of Romans uh, 5 on, uh, on hope. And hope, uh, and then it just, uh, we stand in grace and we rejoice in the sufferings that come and that brings endurance and that brings proven character and that brings the Holy Spirit of God pouring the love of God <clears throat> in our lives and that then our lives we can speak we can show we reflect hope that does not disappoint and then sometimes we need we we'll, we not sometimes often we need to repeat that self to ourselves when something's going on a tribulation a trial and we think oh no this is coming apart and thing oh no this is what god said to do at this time to rejoice in this because this is not going to stop me in my tracks it's not going to discourage me it's going to give me more endurance that you know i'm still afraid of things but i'm not as afraid as afraid of as many things as i used to be because i trust god more all the time just there's a lot of things to be afraid of in this world but there's a God who we can trust that we just, we really don't have to be afraid of those things, but he understands, we're still, but we grow in that. <clears throat> and we trust God for everything in our life, and it's wonderful, it's, there's, it's the, the sense of, of freedom, the, the peace, the quiet confidence that, because, and what it's all, what's it all tied to? My citizenship. <clears throat> One of, I almost did a graphic of a passport for our uh, illustration on our study sheet. You know, here's our passport. Show me your passport. Well, if someone, if we could do it, someone, I said, well, I would say, well, you want to see my real passport? And you flip that baby out and it says resident of heaven. That's what it is. So this morning conclusion, you are not home. You're not. I'm not home, and you're thinking, silly rascal, of course we're not home, we're at church. <laughs> but that's not what we're talking about. Even when Carrie and I walk across the street and go home, we're not home. When you get in your car and drive home, you're not home. The problem is that many who profess to be citizens of heaven live as if this world is home. In love with this world, not understanding that we will not be home until our Lord Jesus Christ returns and takes us to heaven. I really can't overemphasize how important it is that we know that we know that this world is not our home. And we can live better in this world by knowing that. We can live better for the people around us by knowing that. Instead of uh, being drugged down by this world, we endure through that by the grace of God. And we, we are beacons of hope. We, we love people as we should. We speak to them as we should. We, we desire more and more for God to fill our lives and to direct our lives and to establish the pattern of our lives. <clears throat> the citizen of heaven, the soldier of Christ, eagerly awaits the return of the Lord and lives with an awareness that he or she is not home. But one day we will be. Darlene Shields is home. No matter everything else going on and all the things she went through in her last several years, 
She checked in several days ago. She's home. She's home now. Marlon Wickert's home. Chuck Hutterfield is is home. One day we'll be home. Why? How could that happen? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Jesus died for my sins according to the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised the third day according to the scriptures. That's why I can I have no confidence in me. Paul writes in Philippians 3, no, no confidence in the flesh and, and things I could do or think or say or come up with. All my confidence in what Christ has accomplished at Calvary is why we've got to get the gospel right. We're not home now, but one day we will be. <clears throat> and with the song said, what a day that will be. <laughs> what a day that will be. Sometimes a citizen of heaven, though, becomes so besotted with this world that meeting his Savior has been set aside. Not really a priority. Something good to look forward to. But, you know, let's not be in a hurry, okay? Lord, give me a few more years here. I mean, let's not be in such a hurry. that They're not like Paul. He'd rather be with the Lord. You know, absent from the body, present with the Lord. It's No, I, I, I really like it here. And we've lost... We've lost our focus. We've lost our perspective. There's, with this person, there's no eagerly waiting. There's no yearning to be with the Lord. And, and sometimes the love for this world shows, well, it shows that maybe the person's not a citizen of heaven after all. But they've been deceived. They're, they're fooled. They, they don't have all these things that, that, that show you're a citizen of heaven. So maybe... Maybe it's telling them that they're, they're not. If you're so in love with this world, 1 John 2.15 says, Do not love the world or the things of the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. Now here is the call to all citizens of heaven, all subjects of the king. And, and I love the sound of that too. I am a subject of King Jesus. I, if anything, I want to learn how to bow more, lower and lower before him, love him more, worship him more, obey him more, submit to him more. So here's a call to the citizens of heaven. Because Jesus lives in heaven. He's going to return one day and call us to himself. Live in the presence of King Jesus by living as Christ calls us to live. Do what he says. Do what he says. Suffering together for the gospel is one thing he tells us to do. Laying down our lives for our brothers and sisters in Christ. He tells us to do many things. Whatever it is that he calls us to do. You want to live in the present because people, people will, uh, <clears throat> I'm just not sensing the presence of God. Well, are you living under his command? Because if you're not, then, then you're, you're somewhere he's not. There is in his presence you will find joy and peace and quiet assurance. Your life will not be tossed and turned by world events or the turmoil in politics or the up and down topsy-turvy state of the economy. We will in that place experience the abundant life that Jesus offers and there our hearts will yearn to be with Christ. We will be citizens of heaven who are eagerly waiting for his return. Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence, there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. That's what home, that's what home is gonna be like. Let's pray. Mighty God, thank you for speaking to us this morning. Holy Spirit of God, pray that you would uh, Put these truths deep into our hearts and minds. Transform us. Bring us hope, courage, faithfulness, loyalty. Have our first love to be you first and foremost above everything. Pray that each of us here do truly does truly have a relationship with you. And we can take this message to the world around us. And we can show them the, the narrow gate, the hard way, but the only way to life. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In his presence is fullness of joy. We shall sing 760 while we are waiting, come. And may the Lord come while we're singing. And we're...